All right, good evening, guys. Nightly Strategy Podcast for Tortoise Capital, uh, October 18th, 2023. Uh, so for Sean and for everybody else out there that's trading without a trading plan, uh, it I, I thought it, it would go without saying that you need a written plan to commit to in order to measure your performance against a standard, against an artifact. Where could you find a trading plan? There, uh, It's all over the internet, but really if you go to the chat room and uh, type in the search box trading plan, uh, you're gonna get about 5,000 entries from our trading archive, including some nice ones. Here's a nice one from uh, Griff Cooper. This is one that is coordinated with the Kata 2 challenge. Uh, and this is the precursor to the course that he built that I dragged him through the mud on, on all this stuff. And this is what works for him. Um, this is what works for George. Uh, pretty good looking. Now, what I need you to be doing is comparing your performance against these. Are you doing things in your daily trade that cannot be found on the trading plan? Yes, there are. There are things on here that you're not doing, and there are things that you're doing that are not on here. I leave it to you to figure out which ones. Uh, Mark has one that's more text-based, and this is excellent as well. And I went through this in a detailed uh feedback session a while back but if you hit that search button uh, you might end up with uh, something like this and uh, you can actually go back multiple multiple years I mean I was just gonna pick one from Sonal just to show you that you can uh, and what you're looking for uh, are these little things like this which has a a uh, file icon on there that means that it opens up into a file and uh, here's one that Sonal did five years ago for the for the DAX in which she's laying out frog boxes the hybrid frog box the average range for her target which was the DAX any news events the conditions she has observed because she went through the trade framing questions. Oh, what are the trade framing questions? Oh, uh, these. She applied this to the market conditions. What do you see? What could it do? Which way do you want to trade? Where would you enter? Where would it fail? Would you stop and reverse? You're already starting to operationalize information that you see on the screen according to your indicators it forces you to commit to an answer on those things and then if you trade and you have a win what do you do with a win where does it stall where do you preserve capital where could it go after you exit and so forth would you stop and reverse would you re-enter so answering those questions on a trade by trade basis helps you build towards a trading plan. We develop some scripts and templates in the research weekend and live trading week workshops that work pretty well. Uh, I'll make those available, uh, but it's uh, you can find them in the foundations course too. But you can't measure your performance against a standard if you haven't committed to what it is your intention is going to be. So I would just invite you guys to take a look at uh, some of that material. Uh, find what works for you. The, the variety that's there is why I don't specify one standard. And now there's some questions I think should be answered, but uh, I really think it's a it's a personal approach. And I just what I really want to do is say, make sure that you're taking advantage of the search function. So like if you when you log into Campfire. If you just log into the primary and intraday trading room and just go up here into the search box 
and type trading plan, you'll get that screen um, that I showed you before. So you would type trading plan. And faster than thought, you have all these things. Okay. I think Mark or maybe Sean asked me in the chat room, um, what are the criteria of the owl? Well, it's in the foundations course. You'll get to it when it's time, but these are the criteria. Where could you find those? If you go to the search button, uh, search bar, and type owl criteria, you'll, you'll find all these things. Uh, first, number one, you have to have an unambiguous move. Then number two, you have to have a P1 RLCO outside the river. Number three, the RL10 has to cross the dragon. Number four, the dragon has to roll up. Number five, the RL30 has to roll up. Then number six, you get to enter. You put your stop at the bottom of the PSAR or at the time we wrote this, a Z2 stop. You pick. And then at eight, Uh, you can see uh, up in here a little pocket forming. Uh, nine is an RLXD exit, and there's your owl trade from here to there. Oh, on the other side, is that an owl? Why, yes, it is. You have an unambiguous move in this direction coming back to the VWAP, and then it rolled over and failed. Strengthened by the fact you got a double top. You have a P1. You have the RL10 crosses the dragon. The dragon rolls over. The RL30 rolls over. There's your entry. And here's your PSAR exit. That's an owl. It waits a little bit longer. What's the difference between that and an SSC? Well, here's the SSC entry. Because that is not waiting for the Dragon to roll up and the RL90 to roll up. The SSC is simply the first three rules of the OWL. The OWL adds these extra pieces of confirmation, which is the difference between entering here and entering there. This one could have been a supported fall crossing which is the opposite of an SSC. Uh, but it chops around. When you get that RL30 and the dragon rolling over, you get more clear evidence that the fail is in, particularly when you see it can't get back to the VWAP. And that's the difference between an OWL and an SSC. So in the life cycle of these things, you might see an unambiguous move, an SSC entry, an OWL entry, and then on the pullback, which gets you out, and then a re-entry, there's your Kata 2. And then a failure below the belly of the RL-10, collapsing dragon. That's all it is, guys. There it is. In writing. Let's go to the 30-minute uh, charts and update our little hybrid swing portfolio, which has been pulling hundreds of R per month out of the market every month this year. Hundreds of R a month. So here's today's open and uh, the price action, the high and the low. So we cash that win. We avoided the gap down. 
uh, this thing has rolled over. W could you call that an owl? Yeah, there's an unambiguous move. There's the P1. There's the crossing of the dragon. The dragon rolls over. The RL30 has rolled over. That's an owl entry. Now, I don't take the stop all the way up into here. I take a, the modern treatment of this is to use a standard wrist box. But sure, that's an owl. If I had waited for it to get below this and entered here, then that would be a collapsing dragon. But that's an owl. And it sells off harshly. It reverses. So I take the dragon exit for 1.5. I considered this one and then didn't take it and then regretted it. So my life is full of that kind of regret of the trade's not taken. Uh, AI. We closed, at when this one did not follow through right away, we closed that one, took the short. Is that an owl? Yes, it is. And it did nothing, so that's about a point two win. Failed to fail further. Amazon, uh, collapsing dragon, holding that one overnight, one and a half R. Cat, um, so this is the one yesterday. We took the bird in the hand. We didn't hold it here. So we missed the loss of a big gap down. That's nice. This one gapped down and we entered well below the collapsing dragon. This is deeply into the owl. Standard risk. One, two, three, three R. How do you find those? Alerts based on the size of the gap. Stack it by percent change. Find and the market's going down, find the ones that are doing the worst. Sort it by the worst. Go look at the chart. Frame the trade. Cliff. Why do you trade a mid-cap domestic steel company? That's not a sexy technology company. Well, it actually kind of is. But it does this. Big gap down after we cashed a nice little win, bird in the hand. Big gap down. Collapsing dragon, standard risk. Here's where the R10 peaks. The harsh winter is starting to stall. It rolls up. Take the dragon exit. And just on one position, there's 6R. CVS. Uh, Owl entry short, 1R. Disney, uh, collapsing dragon. On this one, what we took was yesterday's one, two, three, and now we got lower highs and that thing rolled over. So I cashed that one this morning for 3R. Stop and reverse because the whole market was failing. Owl entry to the south. This thing is continuing to collapse. It goes through the Bollinger Band mean. That's the middle of the river. So I just add a second one. It collapses all the way down to here. We got 3R on the first one, 2R on the second one. So we're holding five on Disney. More to come. Dish. Standard caught a two for a third of an R. Devon Energy closed yesterday's re-entry. It was grinding nicely. Today it ran all the way up and couldn't hold. Dragon exit. This is where it crossed the VWAP. So we covered that one there. One, two, three, four R. Probably five. Electronic Arts, 
short on the uh, uh, supported fall crossing. Uh, closed very poorly, holding 4R. Em electro or, uh, emerging markets, excuse me. Uh, 3R on the gap and fail. No overnight risk, no trade in Ethereum. Uh, Mexico 2R, gap down, collapse, hybrid frog entry. Same with Brazil, 1R. Intel, no trade, IP. So this was a COTA 2 this morning where we had closed that trade. We noted this, and then it continued to go well, so we tried it. It ran all the way up to here and then came back, so I ended up giving back that much and kept 1R. Then it fell through the PSAR and the Dragon, so put the short on, ran all the way down here. I gave back that much, and that was a money management exit. I wanted to, I felt like I was sloppy here. I was ungrateful. So I only gave back 2R on this one and kept two. So net three. Uh, IYR. 2R on the standard collapsing dragon. Uh, Coca-Cola, we closed the 2R position from yesterday. Regional banks uh, got short on the gap and collapse. It was crossing the river. Uh, holding that one overnight, that's uh, 2R. Mattel, 1R on the uh, Cotta 2. McDonald's, gap up and go. It was one of the stronger symbols was willing to hold that overnight for 3R. Merck, uh, RLXD, that's an, that's an owl entry short. This is a collapsing dragon, second position. This thing just suffered all day. So that's about 4R and uh, holding that one overnight. Microsoft, uh, 1R on the RLXD. Um, marijuana, that's another 10% intraday move. We got the one, two, three short to our battle drill and just close it at the end of the day because it moves like that intraday. Why monkey around with the gaps when it's moving reliably like that? That's the number one trading value stock, which is a combination of its volatility and its consistency. NVIDIA, uh, one R on the collapse, but it really didn't follow through. Clean Energy 3R collapsing um, and the RLXD. That's an owl entry short. Uh, Rivian. So we closed the COTA 2. It really was going nowhere for 1R. Uh, and then it kept failing. So that seemed like a natural place to reverse. So short the standard risk. 2R battle drill. Collecting four on the first one, two on the second one, six R total, and no overnight risk. Uh, treasuries, nothing. Tesla, um, collapsing dragon short, two R. Don't want to hold that one overnight. Uh, U.S. Steel, four R on the collapsing dragon, single position. It rolled up, and I just took the uh, uh, the dragon exit. Standard normal work. Let's see, is this one the sniper? That's no, a WMB three. Let me find the sniper in here. Ah, here we go. So now we're on the sniper trade of the day. This is three minute charts. This is in Rivian. Here was yesterday's close. Here was the gap down alert. Opening range three. Second bar collapses, so we get short.
How good is the peace arc? Answer, very good. Kata 2 re-entry. How good is the peace R? Answer, very good. One and a half R. Uh, collapsing Dragon re-entry. How good is the piece art? Very good. 2R. Five 5.5R5 in the usual way in a very orderly trader. It's in one of the top 10 trading values for the intraday. It gets, starts with an alert and then just follow the trend. So uh, I'm going to spend some time here on the WMB3 pattern. Uh, this is taught in the Foundations course and in the Advanced Day Trading course. It is a way to operationalize a um, morning hook. What did you mean by a morning hook, Ken? Well, here's what I mean. Is this one? Uh, let's. Oh, that's a three-day. I want to come back to that one. Let's let's look at it. We're going to come back. So the WMB3. What does that stand for? My idea was. After the a lot of times you had you know market would close here. And then you would get a gap down. And it would open here. And it would sell off harshly and then start to reverse. And that looked like a fish hook to me because it looked like, you know, that used to be the sea level and there's these little fishies in here. We're trying to catch some fish. And that looks like bait. So what I like to do is see that sell off. Now, you've, seen, you've heard me talk before that if this was a large gap according to the gap stat then we know it's going to be a big moving day and then if the sell-off immediately goes to a fail stat which is a statistical measure of how far these things fall from the open to the low of the day if it's a fail stat and starts to reverse then we have some statistical reasons to believe that maybe that's going to be the low of the day and how high could it go well, we could take the low of the day and add a range stat to it, which is the maximum reasonable intraday move, which is the average range of the last 30 days, plus one standard deviation, which is another name for a frog box. 85% of the time, price will close, the high of the day will be lower than that. Only one time out of six does it ever go larger than a range stat. And when it does, it goes into irrational exuberance, which can be traded with a contingency plan. But for intraday purposes, when I'm just defining the maximum intraday reasonable move, I use the range stat. So the morning hook was simply the way I was describing the visual impact of this, that you would get this harsh sell-off consisting of the gap and a sell-off that reversed, and then I could get a something like a minimum manageable risk box off the low, knowing that my target up here There would be many of those up to the range stat. 
And when if, if you're going to use the R10, and if this is the MMRB, you know that there's nine more of those boxes up to the range stat. So you don't have to pre-qualify this with anything like uh, rigorous math. And that <clears throat> you don't believe in that trade because if this violates your initial risk, your initial stop, well, then you're just going to be short with a collapsing dragon. That's all. So how could we operate? What do I mean by a harsh sell-off and then a reversal with a mechanical entry without all that math? Okay, well, here's how you could do it. WMB3. I want it to be oversold on Williams percent R, which has thresholds set at minus 20 and minus 80. So when it opened over in here and then ran up and then ran all the way down to here, did it ever get oversold? No, it did not. It has to get below minus 80 to be oversold. The first time it does that on this chart is never. It hasn't gotten oversold. So there's no morning hook here. Because the first thing is that it has to pass the first screen, which is Williams percent R. And then it has to make an uptick on MACD histogram. So if it was oversold, that means it's going to be below the zero line. It's going to be red, and the uptick means that it had to look like this. It had to be, as part of the oversold, it was doing this, and then it gets better, and then it does that. That is an uptick, because it was here, and now it's there. That looks like a higher low. So if it's oversold, then we can move up and try to find an uptick. And then we're going to look for a, a breakout from the candle that just closed. When this price closes, then the MACD histogram prints. And when that prints, and if it was an uptick, then we go up to the bar that closed, and then we would put an entry, a, frac a penny, five cents, above the high of that candle. And then we would pick an appropriate risk box for execution, and then we would try to get our risk out of there as soon as we could no lose plus dinner for two in the usual way. And we're going to do this on three-minute bars. So WMB3 means oversold on Williams percent R, check, then an uptick on MACD histogram with those parameters, check, and then a breakout on the candles for an entry, check, and we're using three-minute bars. Check or hold. Hey, look, there is an oversold on MACD histogram. So when that goes below here, I go up, or I, I'm sorry, I'm Williams percent R. Then I go up to the MACD histogram and I say, was this an uptick? No, it was not. So I start tracking over to the right.
Don't have an uptick yet. Don't have an uptick yet. I have an uptick. That was equal. This is an uptick. So I, I go from here north to price. Now I'm looking for a candle breakout. On the candle, when this thing closed, I go find the bar that closed and then I put an entry five cents above him. In this case, I'm going to use a risk box of about like that, a standard risk. And there's my entry, and that thing moves out smartly in my, in my direction. Now it just so happens that the first move was a big bar up. And if that is your execution risk, and then you see this happen, and then it opens here, sells off, and then closes, where, where is your stop? On this bar, if my stop is not here, I'm going to wonder why. As that bar moves up into here, I'm just going to lock in that much of a gain. That's my money. No lose plus dinner for two. Now, once I get you to that point, I don't care where you put your stop. Maybe you, you maybe you're using the RL10 or I don't know. Or maybe you just leave this in place. Or maybe you go to the belly of the dragon or the spine of the dragon. Not irrational. If you took that exit, you would have two execution R. That's the WMB3. You could have taken our standard idea now of wait till you see the RL10 peak and then fail and then take the exit at the skin of the dragon and you got in this trade, which is one, two, three R. And then as this price starts to fail, you just reset your brain and what's the first thing that I'm going to look for? Williams percent are oversold. So I could come down to here and I could wake up here and then I start tracking from this point forward and I don't even get an uptick until over here. So I'm not ever getting long in here because, there, because the MACD was diminishing. So it protects you against a falling market. This one's in uh, marijuana. This thing uh, closed. Closed here. Gap down to here and sold off. If you go back 10 bars, you know, 10 nine eight seven six five four three two one there's your 10 period look back 
and when it sells off hard on the first bar, that's always going to be oversold. Oversold. So I now go up to here and I start tracking to see where is the uptick. Oh, here's one. There's an uptick. So that means I'm going to read up. I read up to this bar, which is the one that closed when that uptick occurred. And then I go to the top of that bar and I say, I'm going to buy a breakout above that candle. Oh, there it was. It was also a PSAR breakout. Where could I put my standard risk for execution? What price would persuade me that that thing is not working? You tell me. You could pick uh, the belly of the RL10. You could pick a one bar low. You could pick a two bar low. You could pick the swing low. Which one would you pick? Write it down. Enter it in the box. What else could you use to decide the size of that execution risk? Correct, an R10. Uh, I, I don't mind two or three or four. I picked this one. I picked the one bar low. It worked right away. It peaked. It ran up to here and came back. It opened, went to here. It opened here, came up, and started coming down. And it went below the close. I get out right there on this technique. One, two, three. Three R on three bars. And this thing is, and I'm exiting in the middle of joy. Look at that. It went from sadness to joy. And notice the, the percent R is already leaving the overbought and coming back into the yellow zone. This is oversold. This is the normal range. So when that, that's already starting to peak. That's how good the percent R is. Now, you might also have picked a one bar low and took that exit, and that's 2R. Now I'm waiting to see an oversold. There's one. So right here, I'm starting to look for what? An uptick. That's a down tick. That's a down tick. So there's no framing yet. Nothing, 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 and nothing. So either two or three are. Now, there's other things that you can do. Is that the only thing that you can ever trade? No, but that's a way to get started early, especially after a gap that is starting to reverse sharply. Piece of cake. Here's your PSR flip. You can already take that one short. But the WMB3 only goes long. Treasuries. After lunch, there's a long sideways quiet channel. There's a. It doesn't take much of a sell off. to get you back to oversold. So it's oversold. So now I go up and I start tracking. There's my first uptick. So 
when that closes, I go to this, I go to that bar. Now, do I miss the, uh, that Z3 breakout? Sure, because the top of that bar was here. This is where that bar closed. It's not until that bar closes that you can be sure that this is going to be an uptick. So when that up, when it closes, you check to see, yep, uptick. And then you can go here and now you put your entry five cents above there. And this is the R10. In Treasury. So I just put that right there. And we're long. Uh, after three bars, in my view, you had better have your stop to here so that you can get your risk out. I don't care which one of those you take. This one is a, a money management exit. It moved an MMRB off the top. This one was after the R10 rolls over, it takes the skin of the dragon. Now you have to suffer some of this, and it had to come back. So you tell me which one you prefer. and then write that down in your trading plan. I already kind of like this cuz this is already doing that rolling over and the art and the Williams percent R is peaking. So now it comes down here's a 10 bar high comes down to here. Look down here. Oh, it's oversold. So I come up to here. I look for the first uptick that happens right here in this bar is when it closes here that's when that closes so you put your entry here standard risk now you tell me where you want your stop one two three four oh I'm sorry no one two, three, four, five, six, exit, four, five, six, seven. Seven is an exit. Which one do you pick? Four or better, and it's a science project. At three, if it came all the way back, how ir that's like kissing your sister that's that's given back all of that goodness so as long as it was four or better I, I trust your judgment hey that's what it looks on the three minute charts you know what else you can do what's that Ken you can go to a this is treasuries three-day PSAR flip. It was oversold this whole period of time. But even when you do get an uptick, you never get an entry because the thing is still selling off. That's the beauty. You have to have a follow-through momentum to get the entries. Here's one where you have oversold. You read up. There's an uptick. So once again, you come up here. You put your, you put your little mechanical entry in. Sorry. Put your mechanical entry in. Here's your risk. Now, if you decided that, uh, you know what, that's even front running an SSC because the R10 is still shaping downward, maybe I don't want to do that. Your call. You're a grown man and woman. Here's where it, it comes back into oversold and now the R10 peaks so now you could go up to here 
this is where you get an MMRB off the low after the R10 peaks up. This is the WMB3 exit because it takes out the high of this bar. And you could put your stop here or here. You take your pick and there's the peak of the RL10. You could get out here or you could get out at the skin, but that's a reasonable exit. What did we just do? That's a swing trade on a, using WMB3 pattern using a three-day bar. Hey, what if you just waited for the PSAR flip? That's a, good, that's a good swing system as well. So on this one chart, there's one, two, three, four different ideas for how to swing trade using three-day bars using our standard patterns. Look how orderly that thing moves on three-day bars. The gap is insignificant. Just saying. Let's close some of these trading plans. You've seen those already. The traders. Caught it too, anyone? That's the uh, PSAR flip. That's an owl. 30 rolled over, the dragon rolled over. After a strong move, that's an owl all day. Nice. Took the second leg down 1.3. So these are front right. This is getting short in the fall. Still in the fall. Now, when if you got short here and that thing went all the way down and all the way back up, that's painful. Then a resumption. So two quick, two quick losses. Uh, that tells me maybe this thing's going up. I don't know. But it's in play because there's a big gap. So I like that you managed uh, bite-sized losses. That's a good thing. Uh, on this one, which is a scratch, um, I'm going to wonder when you have this much of a gap down, Yeah, is that a collapsing dragon from here? Yep. It got this far, and then you exited for a scratch a little bit earlier, and you make a little money. And then when this doesn't even make a new high and rolls over, I'm wondering, where's your reentry on the continuation? It just got into the fall. It just left the Red River right here. That's a short all day. Lazy man's caught a two. Gaps up here, oh, I'm sorry, no, I'm sorry, it went through here, ran all the way up. There could be a, an entry on the PSAR flip here. An entry here. Uh, if, this, if this is where you entered and it starts failing, why are we waiting that long to get out of it? This is... Once it gets back below the hump of this, it's back into the normal channel. This was a breakout that failed. This is the price where it fails. 
at the hump of the dragon. So I feel like that was excess losses. In fact, the red dot is a good short. You know what's a better short? When this rolls over and summer turns to fall and it enters the dragon, yeah, that's a short. That's a short. This is certainly a short. That's a short. Any one of those gets you paid in a massive way. Trend is down. When these break, we should, we should at least be short here. We could be short as much as we wanted to in there, but this is the mandatory. We even even labeled it. Uh, Mark brings home almost six R today. Let's see what we got here. Oops. Uh, tries long. I'm not, why is that? No, that's not right. Uh, that's, that's not really, that's not a caught it to. Um, what you did was you saw this move, it pulled back and then inside that bar went down and then came back up. So you're trying it right away. And then in the next three bars, it failed. So we're, we should be getting out somewhere in here. And then we should be short here on the formal PSAR flip with a wrist box there. And then this is the second entry at the Z3, which pays off. Now, this is a beautiful PSAR flip. That's an SSC that gets paid. Waits a little long, I think, to, uh, that's the Bollinger Band mean right there. Waits for here to get short. Uh, preserves. We should be sh short here. That's still pretty good. Great exit. Great stop and reverse. I think slow. Getting out. I like the patience on the Kata too. Maybe one bar late getting out, then we should be short here. That's still pretty good because you're front running the VWAP. That gets paid. That's worth a shot. That's a good stop. That's a great short. This, this exit should be here instead of here. I think that's premature because you got lower lows. But, it's worth, but if you take that shot and it fails, where it fails, you should be short instead of waiting that extra piece. Uh, I w with four bars of no further failure and now starting to rise, I, I don't want to wait that long. I should be getting out somewhere here at the, at the edge of the dragon. Take the dragon exit. I don't mind this. It's getting a little late in the day. We should be short here and scratch. And then we just ran out of energy, I guess, because otherwise we, we'd have had that. But that's a pretty good job all day for about 6R. And then I talked you through the owl already at the start of this. Out of respect for the work that you just put in marking that one up. That was really well done. Now, I don't know what's going on here. Don't want, I don't know what the pattern is. Don't know your trading plan. See previous discussion. Um, collapsing dragon. I agree. Covered. Could have re-entered here. This is not a collapsing dragon. That's there's no there's no belly of the of the RL10 here that that's collapsing through. That's just a continuation, and we should have had that maybe here instead of here. That's worth, that's not a bad exit. 
this is a pretty good entry and then exiting here uh, why is that only 0.1 if this was a 1 hour loss how come that's only 0.1 that doesn't make sense to me unless that's a typo a collapsing dragon for two not bad we could have maybe also had this one here but I feel like you got a lot of excess white space here and, and all your price is really compressed and hard to see sometimes reasonable kata two uh, label the patterns so that I know you know what you're trying to trade and then when you label the patterns, you can then check to see if you actually met the criteria of the Kata 2. Like if that's a Kata 2, which it is, so is this, and so is this, uh, and so is this. So what's the criteria in your trading plan? Which of the five Kata 2s did you take and why was it that one? Um, good exit. The reentry should be here instead of here. Uh, pretty good exit. Caught a two entry. Pretty good exit. I'm liking that. Uh, Brian gets the collapsing dragon here short. On the first little hint of a rebound, cash is 1.57. His expectancy is still cruising along with over 138 trades in hand. Pretty nice work. using multiple time frames to know where he is in the trade. Daily trading plan. Sniper trade of the day. Um, this is troublesome here. After the big leg down, first leg back, which is only a 50% retracement between the peak and the belly of the RL10. This thing got halfway back. It is now starting to roll over. What that means was anything below that low of the day, which is why we have a red dot, a red line there, as soon as that went through 432.37, we should have been shorting this thing like a, like a hog. There's the low of the day. There's a PSAR dot. Here's the belly of the dragon. There's the belly of the RL10. There's the 10 and 30 day low. That's your price ladder of targets to the downside. And then this is the high of the day for anything like a continuation to the upside. Know your key price levels. Uh, on the 30 minute chart, this was mostly uh, sadness in the afternoon. on the 30 minute sadness in the afternoon uh, major alert here we've gone from bullish volatile to sideways volatile which is the gatekeeper to bearish volatility and bear markets and it's still a rising spring that means we're likely to get large volatile moves in both directions which is why MSOS is such a nice trader right now it's moving 10 percent of its price a day where were the big breakdowns today where was the failure one two three four <coughs> Texas Instruments semiconductors and Tesla Pfizer and NVIDIA, Johnson and Johnson, Goldman Sachs. Those are big, big hitters. One 5DD and a 551W in Apple. That's interesting. If tomorrow is a reversal day and tech leads the way, Apple's sitting pretty. The ETFs, there were just a couple oddballs that the uh, defensive plays that broke out like agriculture grains gold oil energy
treasuries on a auto framer and no other patterns. This is a intraday pick em market. There's no longer term patterns that are giving you any kind of indication. This is a tactical trader's dream. Um, look how extreme you get on this kind of chaotic day. You got things that were getting slaughtered and things that were just amazing. Procter and Gamble, 302. McDonald's, 329, as part of a really strong 10 day move. Oil exploration, energy, oil, and gas. But otherwise, everything getting slaughtered. So a real divergence in the indexes and in the large caps. Traders value, which are the symbols that are worth paying attention to, probably the top 10. Marijuana, Tesla, Clean Energy, NVIDIA, Boeing, Uranium, Banks, Nucor Steel, Consumer Discretionary, and Intel. Top five. Look how consistent Tesla's been. Not too shabby. All right, fellas, that's everything for today. Uh, should charge you for the work workshop of lessons at the start that's my gift to you we're going to be selling the book within the week from our own website the digital download in order to bypass Amazon's price gouging they want to keep 70 percent of the royalties on books that are sold outrageous like Bezos needs more money So what we're going to do is we're going to let you buy the book directly for you know download from the website. We're also going to run a book discussion club in which we read and comment on one chapter a week with the authors of the book. And we'll record those uh, and then that's going to the first you know, 20 people that are in that, or when we close the door on the cohort, um, they'll get a discounted price. And then you can take that as a study course later, like a director's cut, if you will. Um, uh, or you can you can do it live. So there will be some options on, uh, I, but I'm going to treat that 15 chapter book uh, as a, I'm going to I'm going to build a 15 lesson uh, workshop that that goes through it in detail cuz I think it's that good. All right, folks, uh, more to follow. And we'll catch you tomorrow.